In this problem, we're told a ball is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 25 meters per second. A. How high does it rise? B. How long does it take to reach its highest point? C. How long does the ball take to hit the ground after it reaches its highest point? And D. What is its velocity when it returns to the level from which it started? So before we do these problems, I always like to draw what's going on. So we know this ball is going to be thrown up, right? So here's our ball. It's going to be thrown upwards with a speed of 25 meters per second, right? So we know what's going to happen, right? It's going to go upwards and then it's going to hit some point and it's going to fall straight back down, okay? So just keep in mind that's what's happening. So this is going to be free fall problems, right? So we use kinematic equations to solve these, but there's generally some things that are assumed, right? So we know it's going to be traveling upwards, right? So it's in, it's in the y direction. So these say delta x, just keep in mind that it's just y, right? They, they work the same way, you should know that, but yeah. So just keep in mind, these are delta y. So how do we solve these problems? So the way I always start is with the given. So I write out all the variables. So delta y, I write out v sub 0, v, t, and then a. So the thing about these problems that are different from the ones you've been doing before where they're not free fall is that we assume acceleration is always going to be uh, the force due to gravity, right? So we, uh, it's basically minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is going to be the force due to gravity. It's negative because it's going down, right? We say upwards is positive, downwards is negative, just in the problems you've been doing before where right is positive, left is negative, up is positive, down is negative. So just keep that in mind. So we assume on Earth the force due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second. So that's why we set ac acceleration to this. Okay, but the other variables are still uh, the same, right? They're basically similar, but we just have to figure those out, right? So let's go ahead and do this. So what do we know? So the initial velocity is 25 meters per second, right? V sub zero is the speed it travels right when we throw it. So um, V sub zero is 25 meters per second, right? Delta Y, we don't know, right? Delta Y, we don't know. We don't know V, right? So V is going to be different for depending on the type of problem, but we don't know that either. And we don't know T, right? So you might be wondering how we're going to solve this problem. But I'll show you why. So let's just start with A. So A, what do they want us to find? How high does it rise? So essentially, when they say how high, think about it, they're talking about a distance. So we're trying to find delta Y. But what you might be thinking is, well, we only have two variables, right? We only have V sub 0 and A. So how are we supposed to solve for Y? So there's a variable that is uh, told indirectly. So when something reaches its highest point, think about it, right? If it goes up all the way, once it's at its highest point, what's its speed going to be? Well, it's not moving up at all, right? When it's reached its highest point, you can imagine like it's stuck in midair. So that means its final velocity is zero. So its velocity at this point, right, is going to be zero. Meaning if we want to calculate it, we can say V final is zero because at its highest point, its final velocity is zero, right? So that's what you have to know. Okay, so we, we also know V final equals zero in this problem, right? So let's just go ahead and solve, right? So we know V sub zero for the first part is 25 meters per second, right? And we know A is minus 9.8, right? These say the same for this. So let's just go ahead and solve, right? So we have these variables. Well, which one are we going to use? So, uh, right, the one that pops out to me is this one right here, right? Because we have v, we have v sub zero, and we have a. So we can just use it to solve. So v squared is just v final squared, right? So zero squared is still zero. Equals v sub zero squared, which is just 25 and then squared. And then plus two times a, a is going to be minus 9.8. Multiply that by delta y, right? So let's go ahead and solve. So 25 squared, right? That's going to be 625. And then we minus it to the other side. So this is 625 minus it. It's going to be minus 625 is equal to 2 times minus 19.8 or 9.8, right? So 2 times minus 9.8 is minus 19.6 times delta y. And so what you're going to want to do is uh, just divide both sides by this, right? And so what you should notice is it's positive, right? Which makes sense, right? That's just a, look, uh, a check because since it's positive, uh, right? We know change in y has, has to be positive, right? Unless it was going down, but it can't go down in this problem. So it's going to be 31.8877551, right? You can round however you want. I'm just going to round to 31 point, I'll just say eight, uh, 9. So 31.9, and then the units are going to be meters because that's the distance unit we're using. So 31.9 meters, that's going to be how high it rises, right? So now we know... It's going to go up, right, all the way 39 or 31.9 meters, and it's going to hit its highest point. Okay, so that's A. Now let's do B. So what is B going to be? B is uh, how long does it take to reach this highest point? So what, keep in mind, how long, meaning time. So we're solving for time. And so now we have a bunch of variables, so this is actually going to be easy. So uh, think about the equation you want to use. Uh, the one that sticks out to me, right, is this one. So we have all the other variables now, right? But uh, this one's the easiest just because it has the, uh, 
it's the shortest, right? So V equals V sub zero plus A times T. Because notice we have V, right? So what's the V um, at its highest point? It's zero again. Remember we went over that? So at the highest point, it's zero because it's not moving. Uh, v sub zero, we know. We know A, uh, minus 9.8, and then we can solve for T, which is the time. So we're just going to do that. So V is zero equals V sub zero, which is 25, plus minus 9.8, so it's just minus 9.8 times T. So if we solve for T, minus 25, right? So you're going to get minus 25 equals minus 9.8, multiply that by t, divide by minus 9.8. So you're going to get minus 25, right? And then divide that by 9.8, or minus 9.8. So you're going to get t is equal to 2.551. I'm just going to round to 2.55 seconds, right? This is in seconds. So 2.55 seconds, that's going to be the time it travels. So 2.55 seconds. So that's b. Now let's do C. So C is how long does it take the ball to hit the ground after it reaches its highest point? So think about how it works, right? So the ball is going to travel up and it's going to travel back down. So there's something you should know about problems like this. So in these problems, what we know is it travels, it's going to take 2.55 seconds to hit its highest point. But what you should know is it's not told to you, but um, the time it takes to travel to its highest point is also the time it's going to take it to fall. Meaning the total time it takes, right, would just be the two added up. So if you can find the time it takes to travel up, Right, so this distance, the time it takes it to go all the way up, is the same as the time it takes it to go down. Meaning the answer for C, how long does it take the ball to hit the ground after it reaches the highest point? Well, it's going to be the same as the time it took it to reach its highest point. So if this took 2.55 seconds, this is going to take, uh, right, it's going to take 2.55 seconds for it to fall to the ground. So that's just something you should know. So we don't really have to do work on this problem, but you could explain that in your, right, in your answer. But just understand it's the same time. So 2.55 seconds for C. Now let's do D. So D is going to be, what is its velocity when it returns to the level from which it started? So it's going to travel up, right? And then it's going to travel back down, right? So uh, what I'm going to do, right, is uh, you can think about this problem different ways, right? There's many ways to solve it, but we're trying to figure out its speed here now, right? Because it traveled up, traveled down. We're trying to find how fast it is going right there. So the way I'm going to attempt this, right, is I'm just going to imagine we're dropping something, right? So just pretend this is its initial height, right? And it's going to have some speed, right? Because here we know the speed is zero because it's uh, not it's, it's not moving, right? So uh, for the given for this problem, let's just write out, I'll show you how I'm thinking about it. So given its initial velocity, right, at the starting point, we're going to set this as the starting point. Its initial speed is zero, right? Because it's not moving. The final speed is what we're solving for, right? We want to find how far is or how fast it's traveling right there, okay? So V is question mark. That's what we're solving for. What about, um, so we, the time this is going to take, right? Or let's just do A. So acceleration, right, is going to be minus 9.8, right? Because it's just the force of gravity that's acting on it. There's no other, nothing else, right? And then time, you can either use time or delta x. I'm going to use time. So the time this is going to take is 2.55 seconds. Right, so notice it's going to start here, right? It's zero, going to fall, and it's going to have some speed here. Uh, as a result of gravity, and uh, it's going to take 2.55 seconds. So the equation I'm going to use is this one right here, right? Because notice we have all these variables. So let's just go ahead. So v is going to be, we don't know, equals v sub 0, right? Which is just uh, 0, minus 9.8, right? Which is a, multiply that by t, which is 2.55. So you just want to do minus 9.8 times 2.55. So when you do this, Right, you're going to get V equals minus 24.99, which is about 25. And then it's going to be meters per second. That's the units we use for velocity. So keep in mind why it's negative. Well, we're traveling down, right? We're traveling. If you So it depends on what they want. They don't really state it, but the velocity, right? So the speed relative with direction, right? As a vector, it's minus 25 because the minus means it's going downwards, right? So it's traveling at 25 meters per second, but in the negative direction, right? Traveling downwards, right? And we know that because... Uh, we throw it up and then it travels down. So uh, I guess your answer to A would be 25 or minus 25, depending on how your teacher wants you to do it. But yeah, so minus 25 meters per second, but its magnitude is 25 meters per second. But yeah, so this is your answer to D. So these are your answers, right? A, B, C, and D. So hopefully you found this useful.